My name is Nathaniel, and this is the Motorcycle Archives. Yeah. Oh, dang. Yeah, he's he was trying to play with her or him. Or that... My dog doesn't bark ever. Yeah, that's my guy. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, um, I just wanted to thank you for yeah. being open to doing this and sitting down and stuff. I think it's important for like, because I feel like we hear a lot about like, you know, like the events and like the cars and the bikes, but we don't really get to talk about the people. Uh huh. And like that's the part that's most interesting to me. Okay. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's super cool. Like the events that you put on reunion in paradise and uh yeah i just got like to know like how you got started and maybe we should wait for that yeah or like actually you know what where did um like how did you get into motorcycles to begin with like what was that what was your earliest memory like i think it'll be like 10 years now um i just saw one of my girlfriends riding on instagram and i just thought it was really cool i had no connection to motorcycles at all um, growing up and I just saw her riding and I was like that looks really cool like I'm interested so I hit her up about it her name's Brittany and she was like super like stoked and she was like okay you need to take this class and do this and um, she was super super helpful and so I went and took like the motorcycle safety class and um, and then she we were like neighbors and she would come pick me up on her little like she had a Yamaha Star, which is like a little 250. And we lived in Echo Park at the time, really close to Dodger Stadium. And she would pick me up on the back of her bike and then let me like practice riding in the empty parking lots at Dodger Stadium. Um, and she, I, I love to credit her as a massive reason as to why I ride, because I would not have known where to start if it wasn't for her and her like, you know, kindness. And like, she was so excited. Um, and then I got my first bike, which was a 1970 Honda CB350. I wish I still had it. It was so cute. It was red and white. And, um, yeah, I had that bike for quite a while. And then I bought my Sportster that I still have now that has like gone through a million different versions of itself. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I started riding bikes. And then I found out probably like two or three years into riding bikes that my dad had a motorcycle, like way before me though. Um, he had a a triumph like tr6 or something like that like randomly one day he just like sent me a photo of him sitting on this bike and i was like oh okay um because my parents were like pretty against it when i started like having an interest in bikes they're like i don't even want to hear about it um now they're super supportive i think they've seen me be able to like build a career with motorcycles yeah. and cars and stuff and the shows and the events and they see how passionate i am about it so they're like super supportive of it now and like excited um because of all these cool opportunities that i've gotten um but in the beginning they were just like i don't i don't even want to hear about it you know <laughs> yeah. um so it's funny to see them now be like okay yeah this is cool right yeah because yeah. they're probably the first thing they think is like you know like dangerous hurt. yeah totally 100 yeah. percent. they were just like why do you even want why do you want to do this like this is just like not something you we grow you grow up around and i just was like i don't know it just seems interesting to me yeah. um and I feel like so corny saying this, but like motorcycles changed my life. Like my whole life revolves around like old bikes and old cars now. Um, I just like, I don't even know what my life would be like. I don't know what I would really be doing. I'd probably just be doing photo full time um, if I wasn't doing the shows. But honestly, doing the events is like really personally fulfilling for me. Like, um, and it's really hard and it's very draining. and It's a lot of work, but at the end of the day, it's something I really enjoy doing that I'm passionate about. It's really important to me. That's something that I admire about you is that like that didn't really, I mean, car shows and stuff, they exist, but like you created like two of them. Um, and I think that's really cool. I, like some of my favorite people are people who create something from the ground up and are willing to just, if it doesn't exist, they'll make it happen. Yeah. Um, like what I was, was the idea behind that. Like around what like, making the car and motorcycle yeah. shows. Um, well, so my partner for paradise, Lana, um, she does, uh, women's moto exhibit and the dream roll and stuff like that. She, I was on a trip with her and uh, my friend Becky, actually it's Axel and this other girl Liz. And we were just um, on this motorcycle trip in Europe. And Lana approached me about having the idea for um, Paradise at the time. She's like, well, I wanna do this like car motorcycle show. And she had a connection at the ACE and she kind of came to me to kind of help her narrow it down and like t just kind of figure out how we wanted to do it um and so then i, I brought in chase to kind of help us as well um and that's just kind of how it started i i had no experience doing events i just kind of figured out what i needed to do and just started doing it um and that was like 
a cool way to go about it. You know, I think it's really that kind of corny advice of just like, just get started, just do it and you'll just figure it out. Like it sounds scary, but it's honestly just so the truth, you yeah. know, you just start kind of figuring out where you need to fill in the gaps and right. you know, it's, it's just like, I feel like if you think too much about it, you won't do it. Yes, I get I get caught up in a lot of like, oh, I want things to be perfect. Or I want things to be a certain way. It's not the right time or whatever. But like, honestly, you just have to start doing, you just have to start doing it. Otherwise, you'll just be kind of stuck in that mindset for a really long time. Um, and I'm definitely guilty of it in other with other projects or, you know, whatever, just not starting because I feel like the timing's not right or it's yeah. not, per nothing's ever going to be perfect. Yeah, you know what I mean? Sure. So you just have to kind of start doing it <laughs> yeah. and it'll kind of start working itself out in a way. Yeah, I feel like that's similar to, I don't know if you felt that way about like your photography, like, um, yeah, you kind of like create like excuses for yourself sometimes. Or you, oh, yeah. Like, it has to be too perfect or it's not perfect enough and then it prevents you. From yeah, doing I'm a massive like procrastinator. So <laughs> yeah. like it's very easy for me like, oh, it's just it's not the right time yet. Like you just have to just fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's good advice. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. 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 Um, can you talk a little bit about like maybe like some of the most memorable experiences you had riding motorcycles and what it means to you like on a deeper level? Um, the first thing that comes to mind is probably that Europe trip um, where we kind of came up with Paradise. Um, that's where I kind of really became friends with, um, became friends with Becky. Um, just that whole trip in itself uh, was really cool because we rode around Europe for like almost a month. I mean, it was quite a long time ago now. It was like 2016, 2017. Um, we rode, we rode around Europe for like a month on like Husqvarna Supermotos, which are basically like dirt bikes. It was like super uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> but like it, like I still think about that trip all the time. Um, because I had almost only been riding, I think for like a year and a half. I was the least experienced rider wow. on that trip. I'd only been riding for a little bit and we're riding through like the Swiss Alps, you know, like <laughs> yeah. it was crazy riding and it made me such a better rider. But um, that trip was really memorable. I've done lots of trips with Becky. Like we've ridden to like to Mexico. I remember when we, um, after Babe's ride out one year, she wanted to <laughs> ride, uh, hold on, Knox, Knox. Uh, this just feels crazy, man. Yeah. I mean, he'll he'll play too, <laughs> but like once he kind of gets a little more comfortable with him and stuff. Yeah, well, um, he, well, they're doing it now, so it's fine. Just side note, like, oh, there you go. He like we used to go on uh, our walks in the morning. Like this was like a month ago. I just found him two months ago. You found him? Yeah, I found him on the street. He was like, I don't know what <laughs> crazy boy. But anyways, he used to pass out after our walks, but now he can keep going. powers through. Yeah, he powers through. He's got so much more like energy. Oh my god. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, let me know. If, no, 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 he's that. totally fine. And he will he will check him if he doesn't like it. If there's something he doesn't like, he'll... Yeah, he needs to be checked. He'll check him. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Yeah, look at those teeth on him. He's a, he's a beast. He's a Malinois. <laughs> Is he? Yeah. He's a lot of things on. He's 51% Malinois. Really? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, anyway, so you're in, you're, you're in the Swiss Alps. Yes, we were riding in the, the, the Alps in Europe. Um, that trip was really memorable. And then ri probably, oh, I was talking about the trip with Becky. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> oh one year after Babe's ride out, she wanted to ride to Mexico because we we're pretty much halfway there um, and do the route that they used to do on El Diablo run when it was still a ride and not just kind of like meeting in Mexico. So we basically followed their route. No one wanted to go with us. Jesus Christ, Rex. Rex. Here. Hey. Knox, come here. Relax, Rex. This is what having kids feels like. It's probably worse. Huh. The kids, not the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Knox, come here. Rex, Rex. Hey, calm down, Bubba. No, he's all right. He just needs to relax. Um, is it cool if I go grab his? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I to do whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, time out, time out, y'all. I know, we need to get a trainer. There's not really any good, like, a lot of options in my area. Where do you live? 
Uh, Visalia? Like, uh... Oh, that's fucking far. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not that bad. Yeah, but it's far. Nah. Yeah, I came out here to work every weekend. Okay. Do you know... I, I know one friend... What? I don't do that. No. I know one friend that is from there. His name is Mikey. Mikey. He's from Visalia. Oh, okay. Well, shit. Mikey, wherever you're at, come through. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he doesn't live there. He lives in LA, but I just know he's from there because he oh, goes okay. to, like, for holidays, he goes home and stuff. Also, the Golden State Killer. Is from Visalia? Um, I, or he did yeah, some, he's from... He did some killing in Visalia, right? Is he not from there? Or he's, like, from the Bay Area. But I know, but I remember it from, like, his whole story. Yeah, that's what we're known for. Golden State Killer? Yeah, yeah that... I have been there before driving back down here. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of farmlands and... It's close to the Sequoia, so that's cool. Oh, that's nice, yeah. Yeah. I just did a trip to to Yosemite, but like I went all the way around the desert. Oh, that's nice. It was nice. But anyways, <laughs> sorry, sorry about all that. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, we, if you we're talking, oh, okay, we're talking about the memorable trip. Um, okay, I think my other memorable trip, a memorable trip would be with Becky. Um, one year after Babes Ride Out, she wanted to ride the route that they were used to do for El Diablo Run when it was still more of kind of a ride across Mexico. Um, no one, I don't, can't remember how long ago this was, but no one wanted to come with us because they were like, oh, Mexico, I don't know. And so it was just me and her, and it was so fun. Like, we rode down the, like, um, east side of the Baja um, and then, like, down and across, and just her and I, and we, like, camped a little bit we stayed in some airbnbs and it was you know it was really fun like really fun like we felt fine doing that together like just us two yeah. girls you know um that was like a really memorable trip as well um i haven't gone on a long motorcycle trip honestly in quite some time so i'm definitely overdue for one yeah i've been doing a lot more car stuff right okay so i mean you and becky are like really close like can you talk about that relationship and like I guess that like what it means to have somebody that you could share this passion with, you know, that you. Yeah, it's really cool to be able to ride with any of your friends because it's there's nothing really like it because you're doing something together, but you're all having a very individual experience, you know, and like um, it's a very visceral thing. You're feeling everything. You're smelling everything like it's not like I feel like any way of travel is very different. Mostly it's like in your car or in a plane or whatever, but like getting to kind of experience the elements, whether they're pleasant or not, I think is a really like cool added experience to any type of trip when you're on a motorcycle. Um, and I feel like on motorcycle trips, you always get into some shit, whether it's <laughs> scary or like just unpleasant or just like the best thing ever. I think usually you kind of like span every emotion when you're on a motorcycle trip um, and experiencing that with somebody is a very bonding thing. Um, and doing it with someone you love and get along with is, you know, kind of the best experience. And you really get to know each other on a trip, like a motorcycle trip or something where it's going to be quite difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I just actually went on a road trip with like one of my girlfriends to Nashville, oh, cool. but we went in a car, um, but we drove across country and took the dogs for awesome. Paradise Nashville. How was that? How was Paradise Nashville? It was great. I Tennessee mean, is so beautiful. Tennessee is Tennessee. great. Um, that was the third year that we've done the show there. Um, and I mean, it's great. It's, it's definitely a different vibe than the Palm Springs show because it's like a little bit like it's smaller and it's like based around the pool. I don't know if you've been to paradise, but, um, the one in Palm Springs is kind of more spread out and just like, uh, a little bit separated and you kind of can wander through, but like the national paradise, everything's so like compact that it's like really, it's pretty crowded and it's really cool to have the bikes like right around the pool. People are like swimming cause we always do it when it's really hot. Um, so people are like in the pool and the like bikes are right around there and it's just like a really cool vibe because it's just like small and almost feels like a house party or something, yeah. you know? That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. How'd you guys meet like to form the paradise? Like your, you started paradise with one of your friends, right? Yeah. I talked about that. That was on that oh, okay. Europe that on trip. trip. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's how it, that's yeah. how it began. Yeah. Okay, cool. Pretty much. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's really cool. Um, I kind of want to talk a little bit about like you being a woman in like this kind of traditionally like male dominated kind of. And that's everything, so yes. Right, exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and like how important it is for like young women and like girls to see somebody like you as like, wow, like that person is doing something that I actually see myself kind of doing. Can you talk about that? Yeah, um, so 
I mean, everything, I feel like I've always, I've always been kind of a tomboy when I was younger. So I just think that everything, I, everything I do is in a male dominated space. So it's not something I, I think I think about too much. It's more about like my personal experience and what I want to do with it. Um, but yeah, I, I think at any time someone comes up to me and kind of mentions that I kind of, I like forget about that, you know, cause I'm just doing my thing and it's just su such a normal part of my life that it's like everything is male dominated. Um, but you know, I've def definitely gotten discredited in lots of ways of like, Oh, you're just a cute girl or whatever. You know what I mean? And I'm like, okay, well I'd be stupid if I didn't play into that. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't know. It, it's just, it's more about like, I'm doing what I want to do. And I, it doesn't matter to me if it's like a male dominated thing. I've gotten like, talk down to lots of times and whatever, but I'm just kind of like, I don't, you know, you just kind of deal with it and like keep going. And just, it's f always fun to prove people wrong. You know, like it, people are going to be mad about shit all the time. And they are like on the internet in real life, whatever, but that's not my experience. If you want to be mad about it, then have fun. But I'm like going to continue doing what I want to do regardless of people's opinions or outlooks or whatever on what I'm doing. You know, it's like, I think it's, I get reminded of it a lot in the car world, going to car shows, you know, like I remember I was, I went to a car show with my partner at the time and someone like, even though I drove the car into the car show, like the guy that wanted to talk about my car went straight to my partner and he goes, I don't know, talk to her, it's her car, you <laughs> yeah. know? So it's like really like those things really reminds me. And I think it's more so kind of in the car world. Cause I think that's still very like old school. Like I think motorcycles now people are like, there's a lot of f women who ride and who are doing things in like, the motorcycle world so it's i think people are a little it's more on the top of their mind but in the car world i think it's a lot yeah. it's a lot different be also because it's like an older generation of people that are into cars you know and that's totally fine um and i want those people at my shows too but it's really fun to kind of expose that world to like younger women having cars because they're always really surprised. Sometimes they're really receptive. Sometimes they're all grumpy about it, but I feel like sometimes I've been able to get those guys to come to my events and they're like, Oh shit, like this is cool. You know, seeing all these young people interested in old cars and bikes, like if they are really in it because they love it, they're going to be excited that there's like a younger generation that is wanting to carry on this tradition because it's like, eventually the, that generation's going to die out. And if no one is like carrying that on and like trying to revive the old cars and bikes and like carry that on to show their kids, then it's just, it's not going to exist anymore. And that's the whole thing is like, I want this to keep going. And that's a big reason why, like I have my events, like we want to, to keep all of this continuing and moving forward. Hello. Sorry. It's okay. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Cause like at the end of the day, like those are their like grandchildren, essentially. Like that. Are yeah, they could very well be. They could be. You like, know, why wouldn't you want to pass it on to people? One hundred percent. But I think that there are some, sometimes like a little taken aback by it's like oh a young woman or oh she's by herself. It's not like oh it's not my boyfriend's car. It's not my boyfriend's truck. It's not my boyfriend's motorcycle. You know, like I don't get it as much anymore. I think people are becoming a little bit more used to seeing women riding or driving old cars. So like they're getting more excited about it versus like questioning it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so your dad and he had a motorcycle. Um, yeah. Did you guys like, like bond over that too? Once you guys, once you realized that he had a bike and stuff or, um, I mean, I think he just kind of thought it was funny that, you know, that I ended up liking all this stuff and he's really excited about it now. Um, I remember when I first bought this car cause he had some old like cars when I was growing up, he had like, um, some old sports cars, like European stuff. Um, so he would take me for drives and I always like really admired the old cars and was into that. Um, but, uh, I remember when I first bought this, I went to go pick him up in it and we went to go eat and he's like, yeah, this is cool. You know, like, um, it took him a while to kind of understand like why I liked this stuff or why I was doing the events. And like now he's excited and he comes to all of them. And like a lot of my friends know him and they'll say hi and he'll have like a beer with them and stuff. And it's really, it's really cute. He came to reunion and he was like trying to help the merch, like the merch girl and the merch guy. And like, um, he's just excited. Cause I think he knows that like what I'm doing is going to like, that I'm, I'm like, I don't know that I have success with what I'm doing and that I really care about it, that I'm passionate. So he's excited to see me like continue to do that and like to see the events grow. He's like, wow, you're just putting this on. These people are really happy and they're excited and they're having this, this cool experience. <laughs> <laughs> There's a fire station right there. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. It's never normally too crazy though. 
Yeah, maybe I, I picked the wrong like location to like sit outside, but it's just too cool. And I wanted to show your car because this thing is really cool. Yeah, sorry, I didn't have my my I don't know my bike is a little fucked up right now. I haven't ridden it in a while, so I'll put right. that on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, that's really cool that you have that like support system. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, my parents are super supportive and they're really excited about what I'm doing. I think none of us could have ever imagined this is what I would be doing. Um, for my career, but like, it's definitely not lost on me how lucky I am to, to get to kind of like fuck around with cars and bikes and like do cool stuff. And like, that is my job. And that's how I make my living. You know, yeah. like I am so lucky that like, I just get to have fun and I'm passionate about it, you know, mm -hmm. cause I know it could just totally not be that way, yeah. you know? I mean, that's like the dream, you know? Like it is to, definitely to the dream. You love. Uh, it is a dream and I'm very lucky and it's sometimes really frustrating and hard but like I really love it and I'm passionate about putting on the events for people to like come and have a good time and it always is crazy to me like especially for Paradise people will travel far from different countries and like want to come to the show and like that is always few, like we've been doing the shows for like I think it'll be it'll be nine years um, in January and it's it's always crazy to me people are like yeah we came from this country this country and I'm just kind of like that's crazy to me that you want to like spend your money and come here and spend your time and your vacation like at this event that I sit on my laptop in my office or in my living room putting on you know yeah like it's it's still really crazy to me even after all this time that like people travel from far to to come and experience the event so that makes me want to put an even more like effort and love and like blood sweat and tears into it because I'm like these people are spending their 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 own things on coming to this you know so i want to make it a good experience for people um i try not to take a lot of stuff too personal because sometimes that is you know when people when they talk shit, it's really hard because i'm like like i put all my like everything into this and like you're pissed off because of the ticket price you know it's like i'm just like it's so it's so hard you know i can't i know i can't make everyone happy but like i'll fucking try to <laughs> right and that's just like the that's just life you know it's like yeah. the internet thing too it's like there's always going to be a hater you know, there's always oh, there's something. many a hater, <laughs> yeah, many so. a hater. So it's like, I don't know. It's sometimes I try and have fun with it and like, but it, it sometimes it gets me, you know what I mean? Cause yeah. I'm just like, I'm just sitting here trying to like make something fun for people to do. And you're just like, you, I don't know. You have some shit to say about it, you know, or you're pissed off about something. Yeah, I know. Totally. Oh my gosh. It's my homeboy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like you kind of touched on it, but. He's getting all frustrated because he's trying to get that thing out. Yeah, I put it in too deep and now I can't get it out. Um, so, so you kind of touched on this a little bit, but I just wanted to ask you, like, do you ever look back on everything that you've accomplished so far? Like you've put so much time and effort into all these things. And like, you're just like, wow, like I can't believe, like younger me would be like, holy shit, like this is like what I wanted and what I dreamed of. Like, Sometimes I do, and I think that like it's when I'll be like uploading one of like a recap video from Paradise, and sometimes I'll reminisce and kind of like watch some of the videos, and I'm like, oh my god, like that was how many years ago? And like when I printed all the posters for my office, which like that is not even close to all of them, that like wall of the posters, I'm just like, oh wow, fuck, like we've done a lot of events, you know? And it's it's cool to collectively see it. Like I've been like trying to collect things from each event because eventually it's going to be like you know they'll be year 10 and who knows past then you know and it'll be really cool to have all this memorabilia because i do all like the i'm not i don't design all the graphic stuff but i kind of oversee that and do the art direction and work with the designers so it's kind of cool to see like where we are at like in the process of like creating the brand identity and stuff like that um, and kind of seeing how that has grown like from the very beginning to like, I think the first like year or two Chase drew, like hand drew, you know, like the flyers and like some of the graphics. So it's cool to see like where that started and where it's kind of like, you know, how it's grown and where it's gone. And then like, you know, Reunion is a different aesthetic than Paradise. It's like, you know, it's similar. They look related, but they're different, you know what I mean? And so it's cool to have multiple events where I can be like, okay, this is kind of the vibe and we're going this direction, but it's cool to have something else that is like a whole different vibe. Um, and I'm trying, I might, I'm, I think I'm gonna start another show with one of my friends um, to kind of, uh, 
he does Cafe Races of Instagram and he's also Asian and we're trying to do a show that kind of like celebrates like the Asian culture within like the motor industry. Um, there's nothing like that. And like, I'm very proud to be Asian from LA, you know? So I really want to, we wanted to celebrate that and start something, it's kind of niche, but there's so much like Asian influence in a lot of the motorcycle world and car world that doesn't get like celebrated. So that's something that we're trying to work on. We're very, it's very much in its infancy. Um, and we don't even have a name for it, but we've been talking about it for the last few months. And so um, I don't know how I'm gonna do another show, <laughs> like mentally, um, but it's really important for me to, I think, kind of like start that journey with him. Yeah, that's awesome. That's yeah. really cool. Um, I feel like there's so much there. Like you kind of like mentioned a lot of things. <laughs> I'm trying to like think of what else I can ask you. Um, I did write some stuff down. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll look real quick. Bubba, um, come here. Come here. Come on, Max. Come in. Yeah, because I was going to ask you, like, like, kind of, you know, what do you foresee for yourself in the future? And you kind of already asked that, answer that question. <sighs> I, so guess, I guess, yeah, uh, another event. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about, like, because you don't, you don't just do the events, like, you're a photographer, too. So maybe you could talk about the photography and, like, you also, I've seen like you on like um, Royal Enfield, I think. Yeah, uh, you've so. You've done like some yeah. commercial stuff or? Yeah, so sometimes I get paid to be in motorcycle stuff, which is really, really fucking cool and fun. Um, last year I was in like the model year campaign for Indian, Royal Enfield, and Harley. Um, which was like really fun to get flown out places to just ride a brand new motorcycle around. Yeah. Um, the Harley one was fun. That's actually where I met uh, David, who I'm going to do the the like Asian inspired show with. Like we've kind of known each other from the internet, but that's where we met. We were ha uh, they had us riding like the new Sportsters across this bridge in Washington, which was really cool. Um, and then how'd you like that bike? It was cool. I don't know. Like I'm not super sold on new bikes, but like for myself, like if Having the opportunity to ride all those bikes is really fun. I love my little Sportster. Um, like I think I'd consider getting like a Dyna or something um, to do like longer trips. But like I, I don't really have the room to have another motorcycle because um, I have a car. I have two cars and like a bike, and I don't have a garage, so I don't need more <laughs> more shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd rather have a dirt bike next. Um, I'm with you on that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but for Indian, that was really cool. Um, that one was like a pretty gnarly experience because we were riding like the new I think it was the new scout is what I was riding but they flew us out to Tahoe and it's really cool meeting the other riders on these um on these trips because they're kind of people who are doing stuff in the, like the motorcycle world maybe doing kind of you know influencing stuff like and then you know get to do commercial stuff but they're like all doing cool things in the, in the motorcycle space but um the Indian shoot was interesting um they flew us to like Reno and so we were like riding around Tahoe but I was like the one of the first riders and it was like raining and hailing and I was like there's no way we're shooting and we did shoot and it was <laughs> in a lot of rain it was rough but the all the footage turned out really really nice and like that campaign was really really cool and I was really excited to be a part of that um and I've done some other modeling stuff with Indian which is really nice and then the Royal Enfield stuff was cool that was here shot in LA um they're like shotgun like 650 bikes um it's getting it's cool getting to ride all these different motorcycles that I necessarily wouldn't like I wouldn't shoot like it wouldn't be my first choice to like buy that bike but getting to ride it um around and stuff is really really fun to have that experience and I feel lucky for that I also did a shoot for Bell recently and it was like a sport bike shoot um and I could have never foreseen myself liking that really because it's not necessarily my like personal style but I rode this cool like KTM like I think it's called the Duke 900 super sport bike but like it was really fun and it was really comfortable and I was like okay like <laughs> i don't necessarily want a sport bike but i don't know like any other time i'd get to ride like we rode that like in the canyons and like malibu i don't know when else i would have had that opportunity um so and it was you know r riding with cool like cool guys i probably would have never met that are like into that and it was you know it was that was really fun too so i've been getting these really cool opportunities in my life to like to ride different bikes like I, exactly how lucky am I you know to get to do that I think that's like another really fun thing to get to do kind of these like commercial jobs and you know re representing women riders in as a whole is like really cool and really special to me to get to like be the face of that in certain situations yeah I know for sure yeah and I think it's cool like because like you know you have your specific style like we all kind of do like 
the bikes that we gravitate towards or cars, I guess. Yeah. And, but like, like you said, like when you ride different bikes, you realize like they're all kind of cool in their own way. Like even if 100%. I wouldn't buy this, like you could still appreciate it. I, you know I definitely I mean? appreciate it. I feel like there's it. like also hate on the internet or in general of like, you know, the sport bike people don't like the Harley people. And then like, and maybe it's less so now, but yeah. like, I never really understood it because I also- We all just like, like we motorcycles. Kinda, we all it's like bikes, fun. you know? And like the experience. Yeah. A lot of us started on Japanese bikes too. Yeah, on but, my Honda. Yeah. But I think that like, yeah, now people are get, becoming a little bit more open-minded of like, you know, you can like more than one thing. I think, especially when you're, you were young growing up, like I felt like I was only like, I liked certain things and I kind of only belonged to this little subculture and I felt like a poser if I liked something else, you know? Like I would think about that a lot. Like when I was young, I was so concerned about that. It's like so silly, but I was so concerned about like, you know, because I like this thing, I have to be this way, but like, you know, I secretly like this thing, you know? And it doesn't, I think that's what makes people so cool and dynamic is that like, yes, you like this thing and maybe you like look this certain way, but you're allowed to like whatever the fuck you want. And like, that makes people even cooler when they know a little bit about like everything and just to like, follow those interests because you like them, not because it's like cool on the internet, like which, you know, it's like a lot of people feel like they have to portray this certain thing and only like these certain things because of the aesthetic, whatever. But like, it's way cooler when you're like, yeah, sure, I look this way, but I like all these other things that maybe you wouldn't necessarily have no idea that I like. Yeah. And it, that's what makes people cool and dynamic is when yeah. they like an assortment of things, you know? Yeah, and they're like a reflection of like you and like where you grew up and it's not not just because it's cool it's well that's part of it but like it's like you, you have cool because it's cool to you not because it's we you right. want it to, to be cool to other people and i yeah, think that's yeah. that's important for like young people to know they can like everything just because you have a harley doesn't mean you can't like the sport bikes or have both of those things like it's cool if you have a dirt bike and a sport bike and a harley like whatever like if you like all those things then just fucking like them period. you know yeah yeah <laughs> period <laughs> yeah that's that's tight yeah i think that's what like the young people should or like girls that are like follow me or whatever that would probably be like the the piece of advice that i would give is just like if you really like something just be interested in it like you don't have to only like one certain thing and be part of only one little subculture yeah you know it's totally. like so cool to be dynamic and to be passionate about the things that like you're actually interested in mm -hmm. you know definitely um so you mentioned you're Asian. Where, where's your family from? My dad is from like mainland China and then my mom is like from Burbank, California. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Have you been to China before? I have. I was actually in Hong Kong for Christmas this past year. Yeah. And so my cousins were, kind well, they were born there. They kind of grew up there a bit and, but they live in New York now. Um, but I do have family there and stuff. And um, it's nice to go back. I don't, unfortunately, I don't speak Chinese, um, so it's a little frustrating. Um, but I do like going back there. It's like definitely, it's definitely interesting, you know, to get to see just different cultures anywhere. Um, but to see like, you know, stuff that my dad, you know, was going to growing up or like when he was young, you know, to, to kind of get to see some of that through through his eyes, you know, and to see, I mean, my dad's been here for a long time, but like to see him back there with like, you know, his siblings and stuff, like it, it's just cool to see my dad in that environment than just like, I mean, he's very acclimated here. He's fine. But like <laughs> yeah. to see him kind of like in his like place. Yeah. Yeah. Where his family is from and everything. Exactly. Yeah. Sure. Um, did you grow up with like a lot of like maybe like the food or like anything like that growing up? Like, I guess, what was that like? And how does that influence like your life? Um, so growing up, my dad did cook a lot of Asian food, like a lot of Chinese food. Um, my parents grew up drinking tea, like, and not coffee and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. I just identify a lot with like my Asian side. I, I don't really know like what in particular makes me kind of like gravitate towards that, but I'm like very proud to be like Asian American and like, um, I just, it's never really affected me greatly in the sense of like feeling different um i just kind of was always just proud to be who i was and was, i think being in la everyone is so much multicultural that it's not a crazy big deal there's so much there's so much diversity here um that it's you know it's not like weird especially when you're a child like reflecting on it um i think there's a lot of asian aspects i grew up with that like have affected me as an adult but like uh in good and bad ways, <laughs> um, but 
yeah, I don't know. I just don't think it makes me very different. I think it makes puts me in like exactly like LA, you know, mm -hmm. just, yeah. and I think that I also look Hispanic in a lot of say, ways. Like, I thought you were Latina at first. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's this funny comedian girl that's like, um, I, I don't remember her name, but she's um, Japanese. I think she's Japanese and white, and she like lives part time in Japan and part time in New York. And she's like, "Oh, I'm Japanese and white, and sometimes," or she's like, "And somehow that makes me Hispanic," <laughs> yeah. you know. And it's very true. It's like I get that all the time, and I think especially being in in LA, um, it's just kind of what's around. So people just automatically assume assume that, and that's fine too. Um, I have a lot of Latina friends, and they call me like like honorary <laughs> Latina because people <laughs> just always assume that. Um, and like, I also appreciate that culture a lot, you know, like low rider culture and like, just, you know, seeing just growing up in LA, like I definitely, uh, you know, appreciate that. Like a lot of the car culture, you know, it's, it's just part of w where I grew up in yeah. a way. You I mean, know? It's like a melting pot. Like you said, like there's all kinds of, you know, people here and it's, that's part of the reason why I love LA so much is you could find almost any food authentic and it's delicious 100% and it's like dude whenever I come here I feel so like I gotta eat something you know what I mean yeah like, yeah eat some good food <laughs> uh, no I'm sure there's that. not a lot of options in Visalia you'd be surprised <laughs> though there's some good stuff over yeah? there. yeah okay there's, I there's like you. one Thai restaurant it's really good actually though um, I believe you there's some, there's some good stuff over there but it is pretty uh, minimal for sure there's we have good oranges Crazy yeah that. yeah um, but yeah, that's really awesome. So you talked about not really riding motorcycles recently, but do you have any, <laughs> do you have any like uh, plans of like, um, like this would be like another dream trip to do like that I haven't done before or this um, is a place that I'll go? I would love to go to Japan. That's something that we've been trying, me and Becky have been trying to work out. I really would like to go to Moon Eyes and there's a lot of cool Japanese girls out there that ride sick ass choppers and I feel like they don't like they should be getting a lot more attention um like in general and I would love to be part of like part of like part of that you know like as an Asian woman just trying to like amplify like Asian culture Asian people and motorcycles and especially women um so that's something I would love to be a part of and hopefully that happens sometime soon it sounds like a next the next event an international one I guess you're, you're, I mean, you said people come from all over. It'd be yeah. really hard to do an nah, event yeah, like over, huge. overseas, unless it was with like a Japanese brand or, you know, some kind of Asian brand. That would be really cool. I'd love that. But like, I don't know how many more events like odd in me, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. just start more events. Like maybe that, that event with David grows and could become something international. But like even doing an event in Nashville is hard, you know, like mm -hmm. logistically, Yeah, yeah. like as a, as a small, as a small show, like thinking about that is stressful. Like getting shit over to there anywhere true, is huh? a lot logistically, even just getting shit to Nashville. Like luckily I was able to find, usually Chase will drive out there and then he, you know, makes it worthwhile and goes to pick up bikes or swap meets or parts or whatever. But his uh, now wife is pregnant. So he's, you know, obviously a little busy. His priorities have changed, um, which, you know, congratulations to them. Um, but you know, I luckily had a friend of a friend who was like, okay, I can take stuff out there. And he ended up being really awesome. And, um, I feel very fortunate that that worked out because people were like, hire transport companies. Like, I don't want to deal with that. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's the last thing I want to deal with. Right. So like trying to keep it like in the family with people, like I'd rather like pay a homie yeah, you, to do you that. Trust them, like, you know, well, I didn't really know him. I was just a friend of a friend, but I trust him now. He was great. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, yeah, it was a, definitely a little bit of a gamble, but it worked out. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It's Can still you... very grassroots, you know, it's like I'm doing a lot of the like, a lot of it still, you know, it's not like for the show in Palm Springs, we like get a, we kind of have like a crew and we bring a producer in, but like the Nashville show is very like this year I did it by myself, you know, like Lana, my partner, like last year she was pregnant during the Nashville show and the event is like 21 and up. So um, this year she had her baby. So she's like, I don't, she's like, if you want to do it, like go, go for it, you know, cause it's just, you know, it's smaller. So I was like, all right. So I've kind of taken that on. Um, it's a lot easier to plan because of the size of it. Um, but yeah. Yeah. That sounds like a lot. It um, is. Do, it do you have any plans is. like outside of events that things that you would want to do? Like if it's your photography, like career, or if it's, you know, anything else. Cause I'm, I'm sure like, I, I don't know, as somebody who does the creative work as well, 
I feel like you're kind of forced because there's so much competition yeah. to like do a lot of things to support yourself. Yeah. And I think that kind of goes for a lot of people in general today. Yeah, things, working freelance yeah, is it's, it's really difficult. Um, I really, I don't shoot anywhere near as much as I used to. Like, I've been shooting photos since I was like 15 years old. So more than half my life now, you know, and I've gone up and down with it of just like loving it, hating it, being over it. Um, a lot of being over it, you know, ha having to shoot stuff I don't want to because I need money, like really made me fall out of love with photography for a long time because it was just a job and it was like not personally fulfilling anymore. You know, shooting stuff that just lived on the internet for a second and was really like replaceable, like, was not fun for me and it you know it kind of just made me sad and was shooting like you know shooting stuff like e-com and whatever like it's fine to make money um but you know I went through just not not wanting to shoot photos at all and I think on it's been a while but like I went on that road trip and that was the first time in like probably years I re felt really felt compelled to shoot photos and to be like really excited like I did another project when um for at wild they did like a a small like community art show and that was really fun and I shot like women with their horses and that was really fun for me and it felt like you know documenting that and like you know getting to hang out with these women a lot of them I already were like friends with and knew but some of them I wasn't close with and so just like seeing them and having their relationships with their their horses their animals like I, that was really fun for me and that's something like I would like to continue doing just as a personal project um, but like Aside from that, which was like over a year ago at this point, um, I know his toy went under the car. He's gonna bark soon. Wait, it might have rolled all the way out. Oh no, he found it. Knox found it. Um, it's Knox's now. Yeah, now it's Knox's. It's your turn to take his toy. Oh, now he's over it. Um, my road trip was the first time in a while I felt compelled to take photos. You know, like just kind of like the beautiful scenery and the experience itself, like. I really wanted to like document it like I hadn't shot film in a really long time and I shot like five or six rolls of film you know and is that I, part of the job or was that just like the photo part no there was no that job was just, like we oh just a oh it was, well, it was for it was the road trip, road trip so yeah. um Land Rover gave us a Defender to take which was really cool it was nice to be able to take a, a really nice fancy car with the dogs how did, how did that work out um, my friend that I went with, Janthavi, she had a connection with them. She had done some work with Land Rover um, when I think the Defender came out a little while, or one of the Defenders came out. She like, they flew people to Dubai to like drive oh, them, which was cool. Was and we were gonna take her car and she was like, let me see, like, let's make a little deck and see if they're interested. And they totally were, and they were very, very sweet about it. And they're like, yeah, here you go. We took the car for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, it was awesome. It was so yeah, awesome. So I can't cool. imagine that trip like without that car mm -hmm. um and it was just like so comfy and pleasant and the dogs loved it like it was fantastic cool. um but like yeah on that trip I just felt really compelled to take photos because like there was so much beautiful scenery and like moments I really wanted to document that like just personally you know and I hadn't I really hadn't felt that like drive or passion or creativity in a really long time um, so it felt really kind of like therapeutic to just like shoot these photos like for myself for memories like to share with my friends you know um, and that was like really nice to feel because it's been quite some time since I really even wanted to take a fucking picture yeah. you know and the fact that I don't have to have to do it is that much better <laughs> yeah it's like you're, you have to like fall back in love with or like learn the reason why you love doing this so much yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. it's like sometimes i even go to like car events i'm like oh i should have brought my camera i don't even think mm -hmm. about that mm -hmm. you know um but it's kind of like i feel like kind of coming back to like wanting to shoot photos like you know once in a while i get hired for stuff um but it's usually now it's like i'm getting hired to be in oh my god I'm sorry. you guys calm down they hit their heads on oh, the car they're fine <laughs> um I could relate to that though. That shit's exhausting. Like it is really exhausting, especially when it's like something you started because you really liked doing it, and now you're like, oh shit! Like I'm depending on my income to do this, and so now you're trying to find jobs, and like it's maybe shit you don't even want to do, and then that that becomes like the kind of hard moment when you're like, okay, well I still want to be able to make money doing this, but do I even want to do this job I'm getting hired for? Yeah. You know. That's so. why this started. Is cause yeah, like a passion project. Yeah, cause and I'm 
and I think there's so many be, limitations I feel like when you're working like you don't all have always have the creative control or yeah well yeah if you're shooting you know. something for somebody like yeah but doing stuff like this it's like okay well I think it's really important to create work that you want to get hired for which I think people forget about because they get so lost in like just trying to find jobs to make money that they forget that like shoot the stuff you want you want to get jobs for you know so I've like, gotten cool jobs for like car and motorcycle stuff because I was already shooting that because I wanted to, yeah. you know? So I think that's the most important thing to remember, like, to just like continue these like projects, like your personal projects. So then someone wants to hire you for it. Rex. Knox, come here, Bubba. Rex. Come on, Bubba. Hold on, he's coming. There we go. Come over here, dude. They're like the Why exact same mean? size. They are, huh? They're like cousins. Yeah, they're the same ears. You got some Belgian mellow on him. I yeah, I could see that. It's like, like cattle dog or something. Sound. Yeah, he's got a bunch of random stuff. They said he's 50% husky. I could see that. Yeah? yeah? Really? Uh, for me, it was a curveball. I was like, he doesn't... I guess the fur like... the fur is very husky, and it's like the tail is very husky. There's a lot of like... Um, yeah, I could totally see that. There's hey. a lot of husky... Um... Hey. Hey. Rex, leave it. Oh, there's a dog. There's a lot of husky German shepherd mixes. Yeah, huh? That's true. I've seen that. Yeah, I could totally see husky. The ears, too. <laughs> what is that like a... Idiot. Hey, yeah. like a bear. He's all right. He looks like um maybe like Burmese mountain dog or something. Oh, shit, Rex. Hey. Um, is there anything that like you might want to say that you just feel like is important to you that that you want to talk about or anything like that? I mean, I feel like we covered all the general, the general things people always ask about the shows. They ask about me being a girl doing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. That, <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> Honestly, I'm happy to talk about that. I think those are that's like important thing to talk about. Um, I don't know. You covered all the like the bases. I feel like. Damn it. Uh, this guy, a little troublemaker. It's it's honestly whenever I take him on trips, he gets like. Oh, he's a little antsy. He's like, where the hell are we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like exploring. He's an explorer for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh How God, did you're you? So cute. <laughs> How did you? Um, I guess. Hmm. What am I trying to ask? What made you want to start doing this project? Just like as a passion type of thing? Yeah. Um, I was like working at an agency. Okay. We, like we filmed the, uh, like a bunch of ads for Lucky Strike. Uh huh. And it was kind of like this vibe where it was motorcycles, old cars, and stuff, and. We were in um, Knoxville, Tennessee, mm -hmm. and we filmed this guy, Matt Harris. He like builds these crazy like bikes. Mm -hmm. He had like a 1920s bike with like a custom frame. It was super cool. And uh, you know, I had, I had to edit it and then it gets like butchered, you know, cause yeah, you have, like producers telling you one thing and you have like the brand people telling you stuff. And I was like so bummed because I was like, his story was so cool. And then he gets like, you know, three words in basically. Yeah, they're and probably trying to sell something, so yeah, it's a little different. Right? And so I was like, I did this whole thing basically by myself almost, you know. Um, why don't I just kind of just do it? Sure, fun, yeah. You know? and I just yeah, did. if you enjoyed it, for sure. Yeah. And then I did one episode, and it kind of blew up. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, there's, like, an actual... Like, I wasn't planning on, like, getting a lot of views. It just kind of happened. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Well, yeah, it's, like, organic, and it's something that you, you know, you're passionate about. And I'm sure, you know, it's like, obviously, other people are. Mm -hmm. you know and people want to watch youtube's a whole different beast but people yeah. want to like watch that kind of stuff or people i feel like people just put youtube on and like play like play a little playlist of like specific of specific things and it just kind of like you know happens yeah and i'm sure like people who like motorcycle stuff this would just kind of come up on their feed and if it's like someone they've heard of that builds bikes or you know cars or something like that they're like oh this is like interesting and it's like shot nicely so it's like pleasant to watch um yeah, but I feel like, like you said, YouTube is a different beast because yeah. that the first one did super live, well. Well, that, but like, it's like the algorithm. Like, yeah. all my videos since have declined in viewership. Like, some videos I posted get less views than my subscribers. And so it's like, I don't understand how it works. Like, and I feel like you're always battling this, like, you know, these thumbnails and all. What the hell, man? Oh, my God. Um. Uh, Here, buddy. Um, I don't know. I was just trying not to be corny, you know. Like, 
like you see the thumbnails and there's like you know it's like and that's cool because you have to do it kind of like there's like a balance i feel like but um i just kind of wanted to be like true to like the people and like the if you're like making it for yourself, cool. yeah. then it's nice to just be like, well, what do I think looks good or looks cool yeah. or whatever, um, instead of like doing it for a job. Um, and then hopefully like this will lead to other cool jobs for you, you know? And then that's, then, then that's the dream, right? You or know, it's, it's like- I sell out and I'm like, you won't believe like, you know, like those titles in the video. I mean, or it's like you do this for, <laughs> you know, like Dunlop or something, you right, know what I mean? Right, it's right. like, that would be ideal, you know, it's you start mm -hmm. doing it for, or brands want to sponsor it. Yeah. That's kind of, I feel like the next, the next step is that like brands will like give you money to start doing these videos with like their logo in the background or whatever. That's like, whatever. Then you're making money getting to do what you want to do. So yeah. it's like, there's a level of sellout that's like totally fucking fun. I mean, whatever, yeah. fucking get your bag, make your money. That's yeah, all that like yeah, really, sure. at the end of the day, that's like <laughs> great, especially if it's doing something you really love, but like keep the integrity. I think that's, kind of the important thing. And it's like with the events, you know, it's keeping true to what the event is about. Obviously things have to grow and progress um, with the times and like to like, you know, you need to fin financially support what you're doing, but like figuring out how to do it in like a tasteful way that's still really true to what you're doing. Cause it's like, we've been approached by brands to do stuff with show, the show or like personally, but if it doesn't align with what it's about, then like, what does it make sense? Like, sure, they're gonna hand you money and like maybe you can make it work, but like, if it doesn't make sense, like I'm the person who's gonna say no. Yeah. Even if, I mean, it, it, then it's like, what are you doing? You know, if yeah. you're just gonna change it just to make money, I don't know. It's kind of like yeah, a slippery that's... slope and a hard a hard thing. Cause it's like, how do I make this work? But how do I keep the integrity with, with the brand or with the event or whatever, you know, it's it can be, hard but it's like personally I say no to like a lot of stuff I mean I haven't said no to anything crazy but like <laughs> yeah. um you know it's like sometimes brands want to work with me that like doesn't make sense or like I'm kind of confused why you know it's like I don't even have that many followers or anything like that so sometimes I'm just like well this is weird um but like I'm not like I don't know it's more about kind of keeping everything intact and like what I what I'm interested in what makes sense for me what I actually like it's like I want to work with brands that that I actually like and that are going to like listen to me. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah no, I appreciate uh, you saying that because it's just like a patience thing. I feel like it's like, yeah, you know, it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. Like if, okay, if, d maybe take that. Cause I don't want him to chew that thing apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like the ones that you want to work with will come eventually, you know? Yeah. Or I mean, you approach them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's, that's another option is that you go to brands that you like or that align with you and you pitch them things, you know, yeah. and a lot of times they, they'll be interested. Um, or you, you know, like they'll want you, I don't know. There's just a lot of ways to go about it that you can still be true to like the stuff that you like and to yourself and still kind of like maybe make money or, you know, kind of get on that path. <laughs> Hi, buddy. <laughs> okay, you guys. This food's trip, and Knox is like, get out of my space, homie. No, but it's good for him to <laughs> Look at those teeth. build a little confidence. Oh, man, he's got good teeth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, what's what's his story? Like, how'd you find him? And, <gasps> and like, uh, what was that like? Um, so I had been looking for a dog for a little while. Um, I was like, looking on Pet Finder. I found this dog I really liked that looked similar to Knox. His name was Tabby and he was like a, with a rescue that I thought was out of Irvine. Um, they, he was a Formosan, Formosan mountain dog is what he was, which kind of looks similar to that. And he was Brindle. And I contacted the rescue and they were like, oh, actually he's a dog that's in Taiwan. And if you like him, we'll bring him here. And I felt a little conflicted about that because there's so many dogs here. Um, like I know there's lots of rescues that bring dogs from other countries and that's awesome. Um, but personally, I just felt a little conflicted about bringing another dog here when I know there's like a million dogs to choose from and that need homes. Um, so I kind of like put a pin in that because I also was like how traumatic for the dog to fly on a plane. And then they just are like, yeah, then you just pick the dog up at the airport, you know, which is crazy. Um, <laughs> I talked to a woman who had adopted from them and she had great things to say and I'm and she's had an amazing experience and she loved the dog and she said the dog was great um but I just felt a little weird about that so I just started looking locally and I found him at the um at the Pasadena Humane Society and um I went to hey you guys I went to see him a couple times and he was so scared did not want to have anything to do with me but would take the treats out of my hand and 
it was around the time I actually did that Harley shoot because I was like, you know, I'm going to adopt him. And I remember like looking at the website, I would like look at it every day because they couldn't hold the dog for me. Yeah. And um, one day he wasn't on there. I was like, oh my God, did you get adopted? And I called them. They're like, oh no, I don't know. Something must be wrong with the system. He's still here. I like freaked out. And right when I got back, I came to get him and the girls were super nice. And they were like, they waived the adoption fee because they were like, you've been here to see him so many times. And the girl was like, I couldn't get him. It took me a long time to get him out of the kennel. She's like, but then I like, I put a crate up there and I opened it and he just walked right in. Um, and I remember I took him home. I had him in the crate and he was so scared. He just like had diarrhea all over the crate. But, and then I found out that was this thing when he gets scared, he poops. So <laughs> you poop in your car. Well, he pooped in the crate in my car. He pooped in my car many times because I had, I, luckily I had the hammock thing, but like he would be scared to go in the car and he would just take a poop. Yeah, um, yeah. And that lasted for a while, but he doesn't do that anymore. And then for a while, I only had this car. This was my like daily driver oh, really? for like wow. two and a half months. And I was like, all right, we better be done with the pooping. And he was done with the pooping. So he doesn't poop in the car anymore. <laughs> Thank God. Um, he's gotten over a lot of hurdles, but um, the biggest thing was I got a trainer right away. Yeah, um, and that was super helpful. <laughs> oh, that was super helpful to know like how far I could push him, you know, without traumatizing him more. Um, cause he came from like a hoarder type of situation and he didn't really have any socialization with people. Um, just kind of the dogs he was with, which I think were mostly his siblings. Um, and I remember the guy at the rescue, he was super nice, but he was like, yeah, I don't know if that's going to be a dog you can take anywhere. And I was like, fuck, because I was like, I want a dog that I could take everywhere with yeah, me. And you're like an active person. Like you go to a lot of things. But... Yeah. And so I just was like, fuck it. Got the trainer. And like, I, I took him across country, you know? So yeah. it's like. I just think that if you you commit the time and effort and like patience to an animal, like you can do whatever you need to do with them. You know, he still has a lot of shit to work through and he's scared of people, but he loves other dogs. And like he, when he hangs out with other dogs that are confident, it's really good for him. Like my best friend, she has a little multi poo and he is uh, very, fr like very, very friendly and very much a dog. And so he's learned a lot about being a dog from, from his best friend, cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's okay it's totally okay <laughs> it's good it's like so he didn't really he hung out with cowboy a little bit this morning but he hasn't really played so oh my God. and that's good for his nails he doesn't like me yeah. to cut his nails so this is great well audrey thanks so much for taking the time yeah no this. problem i think it's a good good part to, sure, to sure. cut it and just kind of but yeah thanks so much yeah yeah it's been cool to learn about let you. him play for a little bit yeah 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 for sure